I have the calves of God. <laughs> this is the problem with not seeing Michael's legs. I cannot confirm nor <laughs> deny that statement. <laughs> My legs are on Instagram, but you don't have an Instagram. I don't have an Instagram, so your legs remain a secret. Damn it. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to XP Waste, where... Zanuck is for sure a lady. I'm Michael. And I am Oxy. If you're new around here, hi, welcome. We're a podcast that talks almost exclusively about old school RuneScape. And I say almost because we have a lot of different interests and are easily distracted. So sometimes we won't talk about old school RuneScape, but we'll always circle back around to this point and click simulator that's kept us captivated for 10, 15 minutes years we don't even remember if you're not new around here hey welcome back hope you guys liked last week's episode i did i think michael did hope you guys liked it this one's gonna be i can't promise it's gonna be better because we're both tired <laughs> so we'll see i can't right now in this moment i cannot even remember what we talked about last week um, i'm struggling to figure that out in my brain money buying things ah yes. yeah okay yeah Oh, uh, yeah. The uh, un, un, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have such a good time editing this episode. <laughs> the, Honestly, um, just, just stick it in a track. Leave it, <laughs> leave it completely raw this week. <laughs> Let them know what we're going through. <laughs> <laughs> my brain, like my mouth is, is trying to work faster than my brain because it is 9 p.m. I just got off a 10-hour shift. And uh, I haven't eaten anything probably since like one thirty. And well, I had a bag of like. Why did you not Chex get mix. food before we started recording? <sighs> not, I'm not very hungry. I don't know. I had a bag of Chex Mix at like six. The something. hell? I know. So my wife is making pizza right now, homemade pizza. She made the dough and everything, and she might bring me a slice of pizza during the break. So I may be a totally different man. Your wife is a fucking saint, by the way. XP Jeez. Wasters at Michael and tell him his wife is a fucking saint <laughs> in the chat when this episode airs. Because she's a saint. She's a saint. Yes. I've not had that long of a day. I just woke up. I had one counseling session on Valentine's Day. I had to come into the office for like an hour and a half to do one session. And then I swam. And wow, am I out of shape? You so, swam? Yeah. In. 10 degree weather in Michigan? Uh, it's not 10 indoor degrees. Pool. It's uh, 17. Yeah. So it's balmy outside. But no, we do have an indoor pool at my university. Um, oh. And we've been using it to kind of like supplement fencing conditioning. So myself and one okay. of my other fencers have been going. And this fucking kid who I swim with is an amphibian. He does this drill with me because he, he used to like coach fencing. It's very mm -hmm. interesting because I have the coach dynamic at fencing. You saw the lightsaber videos I posted in the IRL stuff chat. Dude, like freaking I, amazing. I am one of the best, if not the best, fencer on my team. Not really saying too much. We're pretty, we got a low bar for skill. Um, myself included, I'm not that good. But I'm like the coach. Not really. I'm a I'm a coach, captain, player. I like to teach people how to do shit. When we get in the pool, it's completely reversed. So this new guy who's been fencing for like two weeks has been swimming for like 15 years. Mm -hmm. And is running me through all these like swimming drills. And the most disgusting one we do is a breath holding exercise where you like streamline, put your hands up like this, you like streamline and you push off the wall and you just see how far you can go with holding your breath and like kicking your legs and things. I make it like maybe 15, 20 feet. Mm -hmm. uh, this kid can make it all the way down to the end of the pool stay underwater, flip around, and make it about 20 feet the other direction before needing to come up for air while keeping his eyes open the whole time without goggles. It's, it's awesome. gross. It's so <laughs> cool, but like, my God, I'm old. Just like looking <laughs> at these kids. Dear God. You're only like 
three years older than them. Please, please don't act like, like you're. This kid's like 19. approaching thirty. <laughs> this kid's like nineteen, dude. I oh, spend okay. my time hanging out with eighteen-year-olds and nineteen-year-olds at fencing club. They call me okay. like Peepaw at practice sometimes because <laughs> I'm twenty-five. <laughs> what the like, The Peepaw. I had there's a f-ing girl oh. on my fencing team. You know how I got my uh my New York like Natural History Museum hoodie or whatever with the T Rex on yeah. it. Yeah. I was telling I was telling the like the team that I went to New York over Christmas break and I had the hoodie on and she's like, Oh my god, yeah, I was there over Christmas break too. She's like, I saw you at the museum. I'm like, Oh my god, no way you didn't say hello. She's like, Well, yeah, you were just standing up with all the other dinosaurs, like you know, on display, so I didn't really see anything. I see what I mean? <laughs> For context, some of my my fencers would have been in the first grade when I was in the eighth grade. So like the age gap is is weird in some cases. We had a Super Bowl party because the Super Bowl was yesterday. <sighs> and it's Valentine's Day today. We had a Super Bowl party yesterday, and there was a debate with my other captains. Not really a debate, but like a conversation of like, well, what do we do about alcohol? Do we allow people yeah. to bring it? And I was like, who gives a shit? Like it's the Super Bowl. Are we not going to have alcohol? And they're like, yeah. Matt, we're the only three people who are over 21. It's like, <laughs> like, like we can't. I guess you guys have to pregame. Yeah, like have fun, you know, doing whatever. I, I had a conversation with my captains. I'm like, gotta love with you guys. I don't care if like, I would rather have my little sword children get drunk around me where I know they'll be fine. Sword children. Yeah. It's a little dip into Oxy's IRL oh, life for a little while. I love that. Yeah. That's hilarious. So yeah, I've, I've been swimming and I'm tired because I'm out of shape and cannot swim as well as this kid I'm going with. It's yeah. fun. It's so much fun. I'm so glad to be back in the pool, but like, damn. I love swimming. I, at one point in my, I would say like mid to late teen years, uh, this guy named Michael Phelps was in the Olympics and I was like, extremely motivated by watching him win eight medals. And I was like, I want to go to the Olympics. I want to swim. And so we, my, my parents, we went to the, to like the rec center that was near us. And it was like very expensive to get me signed up for swimming lessons. And we just never did it. But I love the pool. Like swimming, swimming for, exercise is a lot different than just like swimming for fun Mm -hmm. so i totally understand but i think i could probably get close to what that kid did with like jumping off and like getting to the other end of the pool and then halfway back like i'm really good at holding my breath like really good no you see same i'm i'm a really good i'm a really good swimmer and i have not been egoed so hard in the last several months when i'm like dude i'm a great swimmer i'll definitely kick your ass yeah nope nope absolutely egoed but yeah it's it's been a lot of fun um it's funny with swimming i don't remember learning to swim that really? is one of my so according to my parents i did lessons and i learned how to swim absolutely zero memory they're like, well, yeah, you were young. It, it makes sense. So, like, I have been swimming longer than I have had functional memory. Um, yeah. Probably, like, what, two or three? Yeah, which so is actually really cute tonight. We were there a couple hours ago, and my university, some of the students and lifeguards have, like, a teacher baby to swim like class and they have a couple sessions that run back to back it's the mm-hmm. cutest thing these parents get in the pool with these tiny little babies like maybe a little bit older than oliver and mm-hmm. they're just like teaching them how to swim like doing little kicks singing songs pouring water on their head to get them used to like being underwater then you got like yeah. the two-year-olds on the other side of the pool who got like floaties and shit they're Aww. learning to like float on their backs it's so cute i'm like i'm gonna be that dad who yeets my kid into the pool I want to do that so bad when I have a baby. <laughs> Those videos of the lifeguards just taking the babies and tossing them in the pool, which is not yeah. child abuse, by the way. Babies naturally float. It's like mm-hmm. a survival mechanism humans developed. Uh, so they're like, I don't want to say they're supposed to do that, but like, it's okay that they do that. Um, yeah. 
I want to do that so bad. I want to just be like, that's my boy. No, it's my nerve wracking as hell, though. Oh yeah, I would not. I would not doubt that somebody else throwing my kid into a pool would probably give me a heart attack. But that's why I want to do it. <laughs> they are trained professionals, and it's not the first time they've thrown a baby into the pool. Yeah, I mean, I'll let them do it, but also like. Eat. you want to do it yeah you want to do it <laughs> it's less about i don't trust you and more like this is a me thing like i want <laughs> oh <laughs> but yeah so it was, it was a good time tonight but i'm physically tired i was also up way too late last night but such is the You're life being a of dgen the, i mean maybe it's not unheard of for me to be a dgen that's but, true that's true <laughs> Feel called out. <laughs> you got to get those league points, bro. Dude, my league points, man. I keep looking at the thing, and I'm like, I'm closer to Rune Cup. I have, like, plateaued against Rune Cup. Like, I'm here. Rune Cup mm -hmm. is, like, barely above me at all mm -hmm. times. Like, I think right now I have 19,720 points. Rune Cup is, like, 22K. Oh. And it's been like that for weeks. And, like, I just need to work my ass off to get to uh rune cup and at some point it'll happen mm -hmm. but not right now can you imagine with me one second that you started leagues on your group iron man account and at this point in the game you had nineteen thousand points on your group iron man and you could walk away at the end of this league with a full void recolor all of the recolors for every weapon and some extra goodies from the last league, but you chose to do it on your main account? Yeah. Oxy, I'm going to have two rune cups and an infernal cape on this account and a Jad Slayer helm. You know what I'm going to have in my group Iron Man account? Nothing. Because I can't even <laughs> afford law runes to get somewhere to show people things. I have like 69 fletching and that's my greatest achievement on an Iron Man because I spent like seven straight years cutting maple logs. <laughs> I was, oh my God, Iron Man mode is so <laughs> frustrating. I don't know. I, yeah. Oxy I mean, complains have, about group Iron Man mode episode 48 million. <laughs> we have one max player, which escape. We'll yeah. have one other max player later this year, which is me. And at that point, that's two out of the five that will probably start playing the group Iron Man more often. And then TMD is pretty heavy into it. Monkey Waffle is all in her group Iron Man. So after League, she'll be back. The minute so we give Mel the go-ahead that like we're back on group Iron Man, she's going to have like chambers uniques before we can even spell Cox. Like I swear to God, <laughs> she is like, she's a gamer. Yeah, she is. But and she's I think I'm she's not. not she's not even playing her group Iron Man for leagues. What are you guys doing? So many points. You're we playing your have... group Iron Man for leagues though, right? I am. I am. How's that yes, going? I, I have nine hundred and thirty eight points. And I don't know how I have an odd number because I don't think they give you odd yep, numbers. You shouldn't have an odd number like that. You should have an a variable of five. Um <laughs> okay. Don't know why um, that is working the way it is, but I have 935 points or something. I don't know. I'm not even logged into RuneScape right now. Wow. I have the I have what we're talking about pulled up. That's how my week is gone. I think since uh what is today? Monday. Since it would have been Wednesday or Tuesday of last week, I logged in for a total of 30 minutes to get 52 <laughs> 52 thieving on my on my leagues account and then I had to go back to work. My work schedule is something I am not used to. And I alluded to this like last week. Oh, I was, like, oh, was going to say did you days. go did you go back to work, Michael? <laughs> I went back to work. <laughs> um my work schedule is something I'm not used to cuz like I, I only work 4 days a week. So I have I work 10 hour shifts. Mm -hmm. And in the past, I've always had 2 days on, 2 days off two days on, one day off, and then repeat. So mm -hmm. I, I've not worked more than three days in a row, and I've just gotten used to that. So now my schedule is I work the entire dang weekend. So I work Friday, or I work Saturday, Sunday, and then I work Monday. And so technically it's separate weeks, 
but they butt up against each other. So I'm working three days in a row. And on my other days off, uh, want to hang out with family because I haven't seen, I feel like I haven't seen them in so long. So then I just, I haven't really had the motivation nor the time to get on RuneScape this week. I've really wanted to. Mm-hmm. I guess the motivation is there because I've, I've honestly been living vicariously through people in VC when I'm at work. I'll just be in VC all day and like pop in and out in between appointments. And everybody's like, yeah, I'm doing this, this, and like, cool. Miss you guys. <laughs> Try and log in on my lunch and then takes 30 minutes to log in because my app needed to update. So, bro, that's um, a mood. Tomorrow, when I edit this episode, I, I don't know if I'm going to play my leagues account or my main account because I'm at this point in leagues early on where I just don't know what to do. Task wise, I don't know what to do. And this is what gets me every league is I just. I get lost in the in the vastness of the tasks and everything you have to do to to get up there. Because right now it's like it doesn't seem possible for me to get the points that I want to get. I know it is possible. I know it's possible to get ten thousand, maybe. Because how many days do we have when this episode goes? Live? You have like we'll probably have like less than thirty days. It's possible. This is the problem with leagues is. And I kind of want to do like a full leagues review afterwards, you know, just in case Mm -hmm. you guys haven't heard me talk about this temporary game mode enough. (laughs) I'd like to do a full review of like my thoughts on leagues, you know, and maybe like I I have a friend in the top 10 right now. We could maybe bring him on something like that. Maybe we can get solo mission to come on, you know, that'd be fun. But I think leagues could benefit from like, you know, that adventure path that they have in the game now. Yeah, leagues could benefit from something like that because when there's a race to get points, especially in the early game, this is not beneficial. You know, especially putting us in a new starting location, which don't get me wrong, is fun. Like, I think the Uh way they've operated Shattered Relics has been awesome, right? I think it's very front loaded with the amount of fun that it has. And then once you get into the back loaded end, it's just, meh. it's not that it's, meh, but it's just, you know, I don't know. In any case, it could benefit from an adventure path style where it just kind of guides you through your first like thousand points, mm-hmm. you know, or maybe like gives, I, yeah, I don't know, just some sort of like smaller little piece. Because there's a task system, but you've played this game for, what, 8,000 hours total across all your accounts or something like that? Yeah. Bro, I mean, maybe less. I'm at five and a half on my, on my main, but... In any yeah. case, you have a lot years of, hours. of experience doing literally everything in this game. Mm-hmm. And when you as an experienced player look at 1,260 tasks to do, there's literally no starting point. Yeah. And I think that's a bit of a problem. TMD brought up a very good point with leagues that it's easier to go wide instead of to go deep or like cover a lot of skills first instead mm-hmm. of just trying to like rush 99 fire making like you would in the Osiris guide because right. you're going to get more points going a more broad approach. I have signed into TNL Jaddy uh, on the groupie as a matter of fact. I have 92 tasks complete. I don't know how many points I have, but. I have been kicking it on Jaddy. <laughs> I was kind of laughing because I'm like, damn, I caught up to Michael in a day <laughs> on my groupie account. But did you really? I did. Yeah. I'm, I think I have like maybe eight or 900 points to my fourth, fourth relic fragment. You got to remember, I've been playing the league for weeks at this point, though. So I remember what worked and what didn't work and like what I wasted time with originally. Right. Okay, I'm logging in. I just need to see how many hours I've put into this account. Real quick. You need a member's account to log in. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. I'm not. All right. So Michael's <laughs> officially done with leagues at this point. It's what I'm hearing. We have to... At least until my payday. Because, like, I, I, I guess I could buy a bond. I was going to but... say, I can spot you a bond. I think I have. <laughs> Although, honestly, I think I may have drained my cash stack on the main. So, irrelevant to what we're talking about today at all. 
Um, this is kind of like Guns Chili's like Meanwhile on the Main segments from the IDFAP mm-hmm. series. I've done one thing in the last week on my main account. I bought Molten Glass because Molten oh. Glass is cheap as hell. Unpowered Orbs are not. Shadow accidentally discovered that unpowered orbs have like a hundred GP margin right now or something crazy like that. Wow. So just like we said last week, when crafting is profitable, you better buy some goddamn molten Do glass. It. That's what I did. <laughs> I bought 85 to 90 crafting and it cost me 4.9 mil. 85 to what? 99? 85 to 90. Oh, to 90. Okay. Yup. It costs you 4.9 mil? It costs you me 4.9 mil. That's what it costs in the Grand Exchange. I haven't okay. made them yet because that is so many hours of molten glass blowing that I have to yeah. do. But when I do, at those margins, it's like a 2 mil profit, maybe. Oh, okay. I, nice. I have not done that math. Don't ego me with the 400K, 2% of whatever nonsense because I can't do math right now. 2% um, of 2 mil is 400K. Yeah, you know. Sure. You guys know what it is. Um, no, but uh, yeah, I, I did buy some crafting supplies on the main. Very, okay. very excited about that. Yeah, and I'm just like doing clue scrolls. I finally got into PVM on leagues. It's been a lot of fun getting some unlocks, uh, getting fragments. Zalra doesn't suck anymore. Oh, that's good. So I was doing Zami the other day, and I did not get very spooned on drops at all, but mm-hmm. I did get all four of my tier four combat fragments in like 40 kills. So all my tier four combat fragments are now basically maxed out. Um, and Zalra does not suck anymore. It's a very <laughs> nice change of pace. That's good. My goals for leagues have shifted. I, at first I just was like, I want to get enough points to get the trailblazer items. Mm-hmm. And then I was unfortunately reminded how cool the void recolor looks. So then I was like, okay, fine. Trailblazer items and void recolor. So that's about ten to twelve thousand points, potentially. I don't remember how much the Trailblazer toolkits were. I think they were like fifteen hundred, two hundred. I think they're fifteen hundred a piece, yeah. Okay, so then that's another like four thousand. Mm-hmm. So right around ten to twelve is where I'm gonna comfortably sit. I'm going for points. I'm trying to do these unlocks. And then somebody has the audacity to tell me that if you cut a redwood log and burn it, you have the chance to get a master clue Mm. with hot on the trail. And that just sparked a thing in my brain. It sparked a thing. I want the bloodhound pet in leagues straight up. So then now I'm like, well, do I even care about the points at this point? Should I just try and get the, the, the requirements for master clues out of the way? Let me put it to you this way. I don't know, dude. Grinding the requirements for master clues are gonna get you a shitload of points. Because mm-hmm. you need, like, effectively base 80s for master clues, give or take some, yeah. you know, which is pretty solid. You also need a lot of gear, which are mm-hmm. done from other clue scrolls and PVM content, which, you'll never believe this, give you points. And by the time you're AFKing Redwoods with Hot on the Trail and Slash and Burn already fully mm-hmm. maxed out, you're going to be well on your way to 99 wood cutting, which is true. also a task. I think if you set yourself the goal to like get master clue requirements, just like period, uh-huh. you're going to have a shitload of points for, for the and things that, yeah. you want. That might be the play. I don't know how many master clues it's going to take because... Pets are not like pet chances are not increased. Pets, are, yeah, pets are not boosted in leagues. Boosted. That's the pets part. are pets, pets are, are not, not boosted in leagues. Although all clue scroll items are though, so I got my third age reigns. There's a pretty good chance you get like something stupid, like third age druidic. I don't want to say pretty good chance because like it's still third age. It's ridiculously rare, but yeah. like you know, with boosted Boost rates for all clue uniques, like there's a lot of really cool stuff. But the problem, Oxy, is I wouldn't even have the Bloodhound on my main account in Leagues. This would be on my group account. That's okay. So then do I log into my main account and do this? No, because if you log in on your main account, you're going to get demotivated because you'll have to do all the early grind bullshit again. And that's true. you won't be maxing on your main account, so you won't be able to lasagna log. 
So you're telling me I can't go to Lava Isle and just dick around in the wilderness for three hours and die and go that, bap, You guys bap, 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 bap. don't understand what Michael in the wilderness is like. This is iconic. <laughs> this is a man when he knows no restrictions michael is an absolute savage michael will try to fight strangers on the streets in the wilderness it he happened. has died i think he died five times trying to set up a lava dragon safe spot that was oh, pretty gosh, entertaining so to watch um <sighs> we were trolling some poor kids at uh at shins because like you can wear whatever you want i was out there in like yeah. my combat gear like full bandos and doing whatever um so people have been terrified to get PK'd at Chins because there's a task to equip a thousand black chinchampas, which mm -hmm. leads to a lot of trolling. So we were running up to Lava Dragon Isle from the Ferex Enclave, and I'm like, all right, Michael, now you have to hit him with the bop, like the King Condor bop. Um, yeah. And I hit this guy for a zero, thankfully, uh, and Michael couldn't attack him because he was too low a combat. And then yep. as I was running away after helping Michael get set up, I ran up to this other guy and went bop and almost killed him because of the twin strikes fragment. <laughs> I hit him like high and just said bop and kept on running, <laughs> like turned my head and didn't say anything else because I'm like, oh, no, this guy's scared. Like, out of his This guy mind. probably thinks I'm the biggest douchebag in the world because I definitely almost just got him killed. Yeah. That would have sucked. And he would have lost the chins, correct? Yup. Like you okay, wow. Yup. Yup. You just lose them. Lose the chins. Wow. Yeah. That's insane. I, I would never I would never do that for real, right? But right. Like, right. We you're not close. gonna like we actually peek. Well, you could if you wanted to, but you're not going to. So then later I was running to I had a full inventory of bones, and there's this guy in my combat bracket just standing there. I'm like, Oxy, I'm at him with the bop. So I attack him, and I fail to send the bop. So I, I just attack him, and no bop was sent in the chat. So then I, I do send him the bop, and by the time I actually send the bop, he kills me. And all I said was, please no. <laughs> yep, yep. Michael forgot the crucial part of trolling, which is to announce that you're trolling. Before Wasn't you I start... 10 HP at that point still? Yeah, Michael basically got one banged at the chaos altar. <sighs> Good times, but good times. Death, death's coffer is free to <laughs> to get your stuff back from. So uh, well, you don't really need only, to run it's back. It's only free when you don't have anything of value. Like let's let's make that clear. It's only free when I you don't have anything of value. <laughs> I was definitely going to add that caveat, but yes, it is free when you're when you're at my level of tax progress. bracket. Let's just yeah, <laughs> tax bracket. Yeah, I don't pay taxes. <laughs> so we actually have content this week. That's happening in the main wow. game. Poll 76 came out. Is it out already? That's my question. No, it's not out to vote on. It's just the poll blog. They're still okay. making changes. So we're not going to like go through this, go through this. Um, you guys know how to read. And we're going to post the link in the description for this uh, poll blog. But we'll just go over the ones that we think are spicy. Yeah. Also, and, uh, there's a thousand percent chance you've already read it. I, I'm going to yeah. say it again. If you went out of your way to look up old school RuneScape for a podcast, like if you went out of your way to find us, you read the news post. Changed my mind. It's very true. So we can go through. Um, I mean, there are some things at the top. There are some notable were... ones. Yeah. But that yes. even the notable ones kind of make me a little. Mm, but it's OK. Are you going to get spicy? with This, uh, this is going to be. It's going to be an interesting kind of spice, let me tell you. I was okay. thinking about it a lot earlier. It's going to be a very interesting spice that we have today. Mm. So we'll see. We'll see. Okay. So let's kick it off with this is okay. Let's start right here. Poll question number one Should we change the rarity of third age items for elite clues to fit proportionally between hard and master? This was an oversight that was just a mistake. How it became a mistake that lasted so long. I have no idea, but I don't even think that they need to pull this because why? Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Hey, Jace, the, the, like the, Hey, Jace, the rank, rank two, two. 30,000 hard clue guy. Uh, yeah. he tweeted something at Jagex that was like, okay, so because there's a correction in here, right? 
it's the first thing that's addressed in the feedback and our actions, right? Because you know how they like amend it. The proposed mm-hmm. change for third age items, the elite clue has been received well, but players told us we could proceed with the change on pull because the current system exists due to an error. <sighs> Their response was, yeah, it's an error, so it could be an integrity change. But because it's been that way for several years, players have become accustomed to the rate over time. So we want to put it out for polling before we make any adjustments. You know what else players got used to? Because it was just an oversight on your part? The toxic blowpipe. Elite void. A lot of things the players (sighs) got used to. And you changed them for the long-term health of the game. Because it could have had negative effects. Elite mm-hmm. clues are awful. I don't yeah. know how improving elite clues could make it worse. I, I the stand the stance they took on this question, like yeah. why it needs to be pulled. I'm gonna preface everything that I'm gonna say because before I get too off the chain, this is not me shitting on Jagex, and I will defend Jagex later. But what the hell? Like why <laughs> is this? Yeah. Uh, there's so many questions that I just think why in this whole poll. I want to give an overarching just how I'm looking at most of this stuff. It's like if it's a buff or if it's an obvious improvement that's not going to cause any um, uh, cause any harm to the game because there are buffs and things that could drastically change the game. This is not one of those. Why is it being pulled? That can go for a lot of things in here. These are quality of life. These are supposed to be quality of life. In a quality of life um, improvement, you generally don't have something that that is in the intern a negative effect. So a lot of this stuff, in my opinion, could just be implemented. Mm-hmm. Why it's being pulled? Maybe it's just for fun. I don't know. Like that's that's the only logical thing that I can see. It's like. Okay, so elite clues have been this way for a long time. We could pull that. We could just do it without pulling, but nah, we don't want to. That's kind of how I look at that response. Is like, eh, well, maybe not. We'll just see what happens, because they know it's going to pass. There's lo- no logical reason to vote no, unless you're trying to spite people. Which no I logical. I, I want to address that later. The the spite voting. Mm-hmm. I think poll seventy six one of its biggest issues it didn't have a direction game poll 76 didn't have much of a direction it could have been the clue blog where we pull things like what if we just kill charlie the tramp he (laughs) dies in shield of rf somehow and you literally never see him again the universally most hated thing about beginner clues is charlie the tramp they are easy to complete until you get that stupid ass redhead looking you in the eyes and going, I need some leather chaps crafted by well, you. Here's how you fix that. You just re- drop it. Re- you reduce. No, no, no. Oh. He's good. You just <laughs> no, reduce the steps. He's fine. It's a, it's a clue scroll thing. Like that's like saying that, that like Sherlock steps are not a, like you should drop Sherlock. It's the same thing. Just reduce the amount of times that he gets put into the into the mix. Like instead of once every time or twice every every time, it's like you get him one out of ten times or one out of fifty times. My counter I I argument to that: Sherlock presents a skill challenge for players for a potentially like extremely rewarding thing. So you're saying that the the effort you put into a Charlie step is not it doesn't uh, it doesn't translate to the, to the value. Yeah. Mole slippers are 300k, shoulder parrots 475k. The jester cape is 52k. Um the sandwich lady outfit is 9k for all three pieces. Demon feet off of only fans, that's 46k. Master clues have a chance to drop a max cash item. And right. a pet. Kill an abyssal <laughs> demon. Okay, sure. I'm not gonna that's not that out of the way for me. I mean, I would I would argue that like hot and cold is even on that list too, with with things that are kind of excessive in a in a beginner clue. 
So I only, I just got two Charlie the Tramps, I have two Charlie the Tramp stamps, two, two Charlie the Tramp clues back to back, three back to back, drop, I've dropped three beginner clues, oh thank god, they are a little excessive, but the, my, my only thing that like, I'm okay with it, they're all in the free to play area. So they're all really close to a teleport. That's the beauty of free to play is there's nothing that's far away from a teleport. It might yeah. be a little bit of a run, but like, eh. For hot and colds? For the hot and colds, right? Oh, yeah. Some of them, like, I think the most inconvenient for free to play players is the a top of Ice Mountain one. Mm -hmm. Just because the closest teleport is the Falador teleport. You still got to run quite a ways. If you got Ancients, just do the Lasser teleport. <laughs> Which, fun fact, Lassar the teleport on the ancient spell book is one of like five teleports you can't stick in your poh i don't know why Weird. like why was that not pulled to add that i don't know but Weird. i don't think beginner clues are worth the amount of effort that charlie steps ensue and it just it kills the vibe <laughs> even on my main account it kills the vibe and i just i don't like it not a vibe Pole 75, we'll use that as an example. Pole 75 was 46 questions of completely redesigning combat mechanics and things related to combat. You know, should Seracnus get a recolor? Should we enable... Um, things in chambers of Zarek to run a little bit more smoothly. Should vanguards take damage as they transition, right? Um, should inferno bats stop draining stats when prayed against correctly? So the prayers work as intended, right? Potentially big changes. Should we recolor the blade of Saldor? Pull 75 had some pretty significant PVM changes, and that was the theme. Right? Mm -hmm. Pulse 75 also bought the brought the Slayer helmet recolors into effect. Right? The mm -hmm. the updated ones. Pulse 76 is a little off the wall. And I don't I don't know. Do you remember how long they've been talking about this poll? Because I feel like it's been a long time. Or am it, I just making that up? No, it's been a long time they've been talking about this. And it kind of seems like, oh, maybe it'll be in Pulse 76. Or Pulse 76 is coming up has kind of been the repeated sentiment a lot. Mm -hmm. And like, for why? Yeah. Because the community has been talking about clues for weeks. And we have at least one, possibly no more questions about clue scrolls. And a lot of this stuff just sort of comes out of nowhere. I don't know. I think Pulse 76, one of its biggest flaws is its lack of direction. Uh, again, we're shitting on the J mods a lot, and I promise that's not the goal for this episode. But all of that aside, a lot of this stuff, in my opinion, uh, could have just been implemented. But we'll get into that. Yeah, uh, there's. <laughs> I genuinely don't think anything on here needs to. Whatever. Elite clues. Uh, no <laughs> shit we want the things to be easier for them because it was math being the problem. I argue like third age is, is a great start. Elite clues just need to be looked at in general. The fact that elite clues are, a, are a meme is kind of like, it's not intended. You, you do a hard clue. And you're like, okay, what's what you guys, your friends, like, what do you think the, the value of this clue is going to be? They're like, um, 70 to hundred K. You're doing elite clue. They're like, um, 40k, 40k, 40k. Like, this is the tier above a hard clue. It's supposed to be better. It's kind of like you go in, in terms of reward, it goes easy, elite, hard, medium, master. In terms of value over time, mm -hmm. that seems a little broken. It seems a little off. Yeah, so, it's elite clues having better third age is a start because then over time if you do a bunch of them you're more likely to get a third age piece thus bringing up the value but the average loot needs looking at too and that's not in this poll that's my two cents on that one i i agree i think a lot of 
the mechanics of elite clues need to be looked at. And if it's not the mechanics of the elite clues, like where the clues take you, what you have to do for some of these clues, it should be the rewards. Mm -hmm. You know, we have stash units in place with various items. Like I feel like changing the steps is a little out of proportion, but looking at the rewards and trying to make them a little bit better doesn't seem like the worst thing in the world because just like beginner clues, a lot of the shit we have to do for elites is n almost never worth the reward. Mm -hmm. Mimics have too high of a drop rate from elites. It's like one in 50 or something like that. From elites, it's, it's, it's a little bit better. It's like no. one in 20 something. No. Yeah, because I, I mean, I argue because I did, I did elite clues to get a mimic. I think it's a little better than one in 50, but it's not great. It's a one in 35 chance to be a mimic. Still not great. <laughs> Kind of meet in the middle. 35 there. elite clues is like 400k worth of loot. Yeah. Well, if you do a master clue, it's like 1 in 15. Yeah. So it's it's obviously better to do it with a master clue, but I'm not doing master clues, Oxy. Because master clues are actually worth your time. Yeah, yeah. That's and that's <laughs> the, the rewards for elites. Are, it's no different than beginner clues. How mm -hmm. Charlie steps bog down beginner clues because it's too much work for so little reward. Instead of editing the step for a clue that's not worth it let's change the reward to make the arduous step far more worth it better yeah if i have to go to troll weiss mountain and take that dumbass sled all the way down right i don't want to yeah. open a chest for 80k that took me seven steps to get right i just don't want to i don't bother right. with elite clues you I would know, I would say the the best use of an elite clue right now is trading it in for a master clue. 100%. That's what people do. Their master they're clue like, farms. That's all they're yeah. used for. Yeah, it's like I got an elite clue. Cool. Let's go do a master. That's Nothing all you is say. more heartbreaking than getting an elite clue and realizing you have an elite clue banked at Watson, being like, shit, I have to go get a hard, do other I have stuff, to do this, <laughs> man. <laughs> okay, so speaking of elite clues. They want to change the drop rate or at least add a drop rate for elite clues to the hollowed sepulcher. I think that's fine. Again, why they had to ask doesn't really make sense. I, I don't love. They had like edited this to something and they pretty much said that like we don't want floor five of the hollowed sepulcher to become be the new meta for getting elite clues. Mm -hmm. Aka fucking excuse me. You don't want floor five, the grand hollowed coffer that takes 92 agility to get to, to be the meta for elite clues. Who do you think is doing elite clues that is going to think, oh, do you know what I'm going to do? Grind agility for 40 hours to get my elite clue grind going. What? And correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it like five to 10 minutes, depending on how good you are to even get to the grand chest? Uh, yeah, it's like on average probably like eight to ten minutes, I would say. So, like, it's really not that game breaking for it to be the original. Okay, so the original was one, like, one in uh, 30? No, the original was like one in 15, I think. One in 15. That doesn't seem. <laughs> From the grand broken. coffin that the grand, closes grand coffin. if you're not fast enough. Yeah. I don't I know. Get it. I, I understand the changes. I, I get it. I get it. Who's I really do. But I. This is another fundamental flaw with some of these QOL polls that I do want to address broadly of like why they're concerned is changing the meta. We don't mm -hmm. care. I guarantee probably 90 to 98% of our listener base would not give a shit. That the hollowed sepulcher at tier 95, the grand hollowed coffin, is the meta for elite clues. I, I promise you, nobody gives a shit that much in our clan, right? Yeah. What I think the devs are, at this point, afraid of is that every change to how the game works is going to be received like evolution of combat. Yeah. If you are a J mod and somehow you have stumbled across this podcast, right? Hi. Look me in the eyes. Listen to me with your ear holes through your AirPods or your headphones, right? You are not going to f*** this game up, right? 
The amount of effort that you put into old school RuneScape every single day, a game that should not be here, by the way, you are not going to f*** this game up. I appreciate how much you involve the community. I appreciate that I feel like, you know, I, as a casual player, have a platform to like let my voice be heard, and so do all the other hundreds of thousands of us who play this game, right? Something that changes the meta is not bad for the game, right? Let's, like, players have gotten used to it. They've gotten used to these metas. We don't want to change them, right? Players have gotten used to the combat system. Maybe we shouldn't change that. That's smart, right? Players have gotten used to getting elite clues through Serachnus, a mid-tier boss that nobody cares about once you're theater ready. Not that nobody cares about it, but, like, if you're grinding elite clues consistently, you're probably at the point where, like, you're good for high-level PVM. Yeah. You know? We shouldn't change the meta for getting something. We shouldn't change the meta for certain tactics. XP rates, I understand, because there has to be a ceiling somewhere. But for things like this, I don't, I don't get, like, you guys are good at what you do. You're not gonna screw it up i promise you stop denying every potential meta change and then putting it to a poll like let the game be developed for a bit yeah it's okay like i know this is not a new sentiment either like honestly it's it's not it's not a new sentiment content creators all over the place have been saying this this is not an original thought from oxy i just want to echo it that like we're going to be okay, right? Like, we're going to be all right. <laughs> Honestly. I'll play, I'll play devil's advocate real quick on the flip side. Less, I think it's less about complaining, and it's more about future thinking. And, and I'll remind you, I'm playing devil's advocate. This is, not, this is not my necessary... This is not necessarily my opinion. But if, if it was proposed at 1 in 15... That's a pretty low drop rate, right? It's tier 92. It's pretty high up there. Well, later, something as equally as epic and equally as cool as Sepulchre comes out, future content, and say the rate is higher. So they, you know, they want to put the rate at 1 in 30. Well, then they're going to feel pressure to match the rates of the Sepulchre, which is already kind of low. But maybe that content, it doesn't make sense that it's so low because maybe it's a little bit harder or maybe it's easier so then you get to the point where it's like, if you set your if you set your floor so low, you can't go below it. So then maybe they rethink that and they're like, ah, oh, okay. So we we're kind of hasty in proposing this. We'll just we'll just go back to what is safe for future content to still make sense. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why. And then people just had to remind them because they. It was an oversight, you know? I don't know. But I, I just, I don't know. I feel like that logic is, it's going to stagnate progress. Because, yeah. oh, well, well, what if something comes out in the future that changes it? What's possibly going to have a better elite clue drop rate? Tombs of a Masket? The third high-level raid? <laughs> in yeah, old-school I mean, RuneScape? I don't think anybody thought that a, a high-level agility course was going to come out at any point they i mean people probably thought that rooftops were the end all be all but then they did it okay but my point is the grand coffin is as end game skilling content as you get mm -hmm. for agility as for uh, is there any other activity that takes I as mean, much hydra a maybe? lot of other skills that like they could put an end game crafting something they could put an end game mining something end game smithing i'm just saying there's a lot of other skills when it when it comes to like specifically getting clues from skilling content i think that was their whole point it's like this would become the method for skilling content other than killing seracnus or doing barrows or doing zolra there's not really a, a really great method out there to get elite clues unless you boss Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there's really, besides like fishing or getting it in a bottle, 
You know, elite clues just don't come that easily. Which is which is also inconsistent with how it works because I don't I don't remember exactly what the rate is rolled at, but I want to say lower tier clues have a higher chance of being received as opposed to elites for for that. But again, I'm not 100 percent sure. I think that clues are tertiary, right? Clues should never be the concern of something. The Howled Sepulcher is rewarding in many other ways beyond clues, Mm -hmm. right? It's one in 30. Okay, that's fine. I don't even have 92 agility. In the grand scheme of things, I'm okay with this minor adjustment, right? Mm -hmm. It's the concept of the adjustment that upsets me. Yeah. Right? Because if the whole thing is, well, what if there's a crafting mini game and then that has to have one in 15 elite crew rates? No, it doesn't. <laughs> Maybe the crafting mini game has a one in a hundred chance of awarding an onyx, you know? Sure. Make it rewarding yeah. in a different way or make it the meta for hard clues or medium clues or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying it's less about the clue scrolls and more about the it's okay to change the metas on some of these things. Mm -hmm. Every update, this is nowhere near EOC. Nothing in this poll is remotely close to something that I'm like, ah, yes, this should be voted on and discussed by the community. And that's (laughs) why I'm so pissed off about it. (laughs) Because it's just stupid. Right? Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't... I mean, I haven't gone through this list extensively, but there are some things in here that it seems reasonable to pull. I will get to them. I don't want to jump ahead and just just like get so off track. But like, there are some things in here. It's like, oh, we should probably put this in a poll. But did we need to have a lot of this stuff now? So it just seems like filler content. That's that's, that's literally the root it. of it. It's it's <laughs> filler content. It. That's all this is is filler content, and it makes me feel bad because like these poll updates are huge for the game these poll updates bring massive changes to how we play the game but thank god they're polling the question should we add a toggleable filter for the desert smoke dungeon if you have the word toggle it doesn't need a poll (laughs) Immediately followed by, should we add a fishing net spawn to the fishing guild? We wouldn't want to change something that's been there for 15 years. Jagex, what are you doing? You guys are so good at developing this game. Stop worrying about what we have to say about whether or not we should allow the fishing guild store to sell rods, harpoons, nets, and small nets. Stop it. Stop asking us shit like that. Right. I, I, totally I want agree. it. Look, if you're going to pull something, pull master level and above quests. Anything mm-hmm. that gives an item that could change the game, right? Don't pull new raid content. Allow us to test the rewards from raids and give you feedback, mm-hmm. but know that it's coming. And if something is universally hated, or universally problematic, like the Vesta's longsword, maybe take it out and put mm. it in with a different update, right? Yeah. This system is so very flawed because it has the potential to deny the player base raids three. Mm-hmm. It had the potential to deny the player base group Iron Man. And for some fucking reason... On the jewelry crafting interface, should we allow players to use this space bar to craft last item is making it into a poll. Stop it. Really? I didn't even yes. see that in here. Question 19. Stop it. Oh, I just didn't go that far down. <laughs> if if it... Unless, the, none of these things are major content updates. Sure. They are quality of life updates that range in effectiveness, certainly. But none of them are major content updates. This could have been a quality of life update blog, and I don't think anyone would have been pissed off about it. You would have probably had to make some tweaks and changes, 
And that's something Jagex does a great job of, is making tweaks and changes to things. Listening to player feedback and being like, yeah, we kind of got that wrong, we're going to fix it. Or like, no, we've run the numbers, and that's the correct thing that we're going to do, right? Mm -hmm. Jagex is really good at that. But then, I... <sighs> I don't know that this is my therapist coming out in me, right? It just, I read these poll blogs and it's, it feels like Jagex has no confidence in themselves. It feels like these devs who play the shit out of this game. Oh my God. It's a Lagio. I'm sorry. I got sidetracked. A is here with me in the league world. And he's here in the recording booth chat. What's up, dude? Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I see these things and I'm like, mm, stop it. You guys are capable of doing this. Well, right stop it yeah. <laughs> i don't I'd know i'd like to i'd like to shift gears just a tad go for it because um, i'm gonna get too i'm gonna get too salty well here it's still in line with the the whole blog but i just i'm curious if there's any of these that you are excited about there are actually i'm reading through this list and i'm like that would be sick so first of all it's question two no no, no it's question four three four three oh this the quest sorting list yeah, I think that's cool. I think that's really neat because it gives you a lot of different ways that you can tackle the quests. If you want it, how uh, if you want it by status, difficulty, storyline, start location, mm -hmm. the list goes on. The coolest one is release year, so you could play a buy release account and make it really easy to just know when these quests came out and what year they were like the first ever quests yeah. in the game. So. I just thought that was neat. I'm really I, I, I think that. this is cool. Add filters to hide things of the following, right? Mm -hmm. Like to be able to get things off the list that you don't want to see anymore. Because funny enough, if you go to your quest tab right now and that little button, mm -hmm. the toggle show all, that's a rune light feature. Oh, I was going to ask, is that rune light? That's 100% <laughs> is... a rune light feature. That is not I... <laughs> a vanilla feature. That's a rune I've... light feature. I have um, not been on vanilla. I mean, other than like on, on mobile, but. Yeah, that's a rune light. Yeah, that's a rune light feature. So, I don't know. It, it's things like that. You know, like, that's a super cool improvement that they're taking, you know, things that the players like about rune light and they're adding it into the main game. And they're also definitely taking inspiration from content creators who make content for them. They're mm -hmm. doing it by release year. I wonder why they're doing it that way. Hmm. Like, <laughs> that's awesome. Right? That's so cool. Yeah. You know, the one right below it is possibly my favorite in the whole thing. They're talking about reworking pet insurance. So pretty much it's like leagues where pets are automatically insured. Hmm. That is the single best question they have in this poll blog <laughs> yes. by far. Automatically yes. insuring pets is something that I feel like I've been begging for for years. Mm -hmm. That's going to be so good. To just not have to worry about it right it kind of goes in line with a lot of this stuff that's untradeable in this game like if you drop your ectophile you can just go to purdue and buy another one mm -hmm. if you accidentally lose your backpack you can just go and get one from ava mm -hmm. um, so it kind of makes sense i get where they were coming from when it came to the beginning in wanting a nice gold sink because there wasn't a ton of gold sinks in the game but at this point we got plenty the GE tax is taking care of a lot of that. Mm -hmm. The the dual arena maybe not so much anymore, but the dual arena it's was never time. that much of a gold sink. I mean, yeah, like the, it was a little bit, but like mm, compared to the amount of money these people were throwing around. In any case, sure, <laughs> I'm fine with it being a gold sink. Yeah, quite frankly, me too. right here, I'll I'll throw you a bone, Jagex. If you want to improve this question, make it so that pets are automatically insured, but you double the recovery fee. Or you make the right. recovery fee five times as expensive, right? I'm okay with gold sinks in the game. I have no, this is a great question. Yeah. This is such, such a good question. I, you know? I like this one. I hope, I really hope it passes. I've, I've seen a little bit of controversy in questioning and just confusion on Reddit from people who are like, well, what if this? Well, what are the conditions for this? Because there, people are even asking, like, well, what if I have a placeholder for the pet in my bank? Uh, because one of the conditions that they're saying is like, if it was on your collection log, mm -hmm. then you can just go to Probita and get it back. But people are like, okay, well, I had this pet before the collection log. I lost it, but I have the placeholder. 
can I still get it? And Jagus is like, feasibly, yes. So there's just a lot of intricacies in this. And my most favorite aspect of this is the, you have a feeling you would have been followed. You can just go get that pet. Like there's no that, reason oh why you can't so just nice. have your bloodhound pet out while you're mining because you're not, you know, you won't be scared to lose the mining pet chance. I, if I your think inventory we were, gets full. We were talking about this in Discord the other day mm -hmm. that people love pets. Nobody keeps pets equipped. They collect dust in the POH because yeah. people are afraid to have them out. Nobody bosses with any pets because if you boss with a pet and it doesn't go in your inventory, guess what? That's 5,000 Hydra kills down the drain because you want to just show off your corrupted hunt lift, right? Yeah. Like that sucks. This is such good. This is good. Good. <laughs> good. This is great. Yeah. I'm heated about how much I enjoy this particular <laughs> section of the update. I do agree that this is one of those that's like this is this is kind of game changing. It should be pulled because this was this was an intended mechanic that they are obviously changing. So this goes along the lines of like, okay, well, yeah, just just pull this one. But like the toggleable change to your quest list, that didn't need to be in there. I, I would say maybe five questions in here deserve to be pulled. I'll mm -hmm. I'll give pets the the poll i'll give this set of three questions right should we automatically insure pets should we make the change that if you would have been followed by a pet it's not lost but instead reclaimable by probita mm -hmm. and should we allow players to reclaim pets that they have unlocked in their collection log or bank placeholders for the reclaim oh, so they did fee have that in there mill? yeah i am totally fine to let those three questions be pulled I am biased because I want them. And if they don't <laughs> pass, I'm going to be upset spaghetti. But <laughs> I also feel like a majority of players also want this. But you never know. There could be somebody who's like, you know what? I hate pets and people who have them. <laughs> like, I don't know. Uh, let's see. There was another one. Combat achievements. Combat achievables. <laughs> They're making one notable change to combat achievements. They have talked about kill counts, reducing kill counts. Um, pretty much, it takes a long time. And the change they're proposing, the lower KC task would stay the same, meaning that tasks which already don't require a lot would likely not be reduced. But they're pretty much knocking things down from like 250 to 50. Yeah. Which is pretty dramatic in a lot of cases. Like, this could potentially finish a lot of combat achievements for people. Myself yeah. included, right? This could help me... This could springboard my main account to, like, nearly having the Elite Combat Diary done, right? If I get back on the main and I bust my ass for, like, the speedrun times and just, like, finish out the Tob KC... Or like the PNM Casey, just for good measure, this could put me way ahead of where mm -hmm. I was originally supposed to be, and that's awesome. That's good. Yeah. Also, should definitely be pulled. It's just an arbitrary number. You know what I mean? Like, there's no, mm -hmm. there's no real, there's, there's a, there is a sense of accomplishment mm -hmm. being able to kill a boss effectively, but at what? number do you apply to that to where it's like okay now this is grandmaster worthy and i think that they struggled a lot with realistic numbers in the beginning because i think it says in here it's like some of these can take over 100 hours to complete yeah. just based on minimum kill time and how many you have to do and how many there are <clears throat> and at that point it's just your gatekeeping based on just arbitrary numbers exactly so it is, some it of them require nice. a team to do you yeah. know like it's i don't know it's a lot i it's it's tough because you know at what point at what point is the cutoff you're right like i've killed the boss once i can kill it a thousand times especially when you get to that end game level of pvm there's kind of a point with there's a point with every boss, right? We'll use Zalra as an example because you've had a lot of people in the CC this week. This week has been great for me as someone who loves watching people learn Zalra. I've gotten so many DMs of like, 
what's up up to 200 kc when i had zero kc a week ago like that's so cool um zolra is a great example right your first zolra kill how many times do we have to say it is a nightmare it is a tear inducing i hate this game i'm gonna legitimately go play something else nightmare to learn (laughs) zolra but once you hit that threshold where it just clicks autopilot and yeah. once I've hit that threshold, I could kill Zalra 6,000 times, and it's no more an achievement. Yeah. Because I've already, at that point, mastered the boss. The combat achievements for Zalra, on the other hand, are pretty significantly difficult, right? Perfect Zalra is hard as shit because of the snakelings, right? Zalra speedrunner. Be rich or have good RNG. Either way, hard. Kill three snakelings at the same time. Venge bomb Zalra to death. Like that, you gotta time that pretty effectively, mm-hmm. and like not get killed in the process. Those are achievements in combat, right? Kill it five hundred times. I love that they're reducing this, right? But yeah. I also see how it could, like I said, springboard accounts to basically be done without doing any work so it really could it could change like you could literally wake up log in for for some people and just be done Mm -hmm. with combat achievements the tier that you're wanting to go for so i can definitely see how this one should be should definitely be pulled and speaking of playing devil's advocate right We'll, we'll move on to the next question after this but speaking of playing devil's advocate as someone who's a very hardcore believer and like, if I don't do it myself, it doesn't matter. If I woke up one day and the elite combat diary was done because all my Casey tasks were just auto completed for having uh-huh. killed the boss less than what they had intended. I'd feel a little disappointed at first. <laughs> I'm oh. not going to lie. It's kind of stupid, but like, I'd be like, man, now I don't have anything to work for completely neglecting the probably hundreds of hours I've put into that elite combat diary. Right. But, right it's still an achievement yeah but like i'm gonna have more grandmasters done now which is cool it's less time i have to spend at chambers but well, we're definitely acting as if these are already passed they haven't passed it might not but i'm definitely voting yes to everything yeah me, there's yeah, literally I'm, nothing I, it's a blanket yes from me but all right <laughs> next topic there is one other question we don't have to get into all these like we said at the top you're going to probably read this or you've already read it if you want to give us your thoughts on some of these Definitely come to our Discord and post in the next voice chat. We want to know what your thought on, like, what are your thoughts on some of the ones that you love, some of the ones you're like, in, eh, you know. But one other one that I did want to talk about, because they did highlight it in the top section where they're like, these are the changes. Questions 11 and 12. Should Bryophyta's Essence be made free to play? Or should the, the Bryophyta's Essence be a drop in free to play and should the staff become a free to play item remind me the remind me what the staff does it's like it, it like has a chance to conserve nature runes but more importantly it's a master clue step okay so the nature rune thing because like alking is a huge thing in free to play like if you want to sit there and high alk rune two handers which is a thing that people do. Is high okay a free to play sk- uh, s- yeah. spell? Is it really? You can do free to, yeah. Hmm. Cause there's I mean, there's a whole clan called World 308 Anvil, and they just sell like bulk items of alkable things that people have smithed or crafted. And yeah, it's a big thing. So like having this staff become a free to play item would seriously affect those types of people. But it, it kind of just, in it, taking that off the table, it kind of just makes sense that a free-to-play boss would have a free-to-play reward. Why it, why it was never given as a free-to-play reward, I, that just seems like an oversight to me. Because Obor's staff is free-to-play, right? Uh, that was never a Obor's question. Obor's big thing um, is free-to-play. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Hmm. So, like, that was never a question. So it kind of just seems unbalanced in my mind. So yeah, I'll be voting yes to that. Yeah, I mean, my only my only fear is, of course, like my fear with everything, bots. At the same time, I'm not particularly invested at the price of a Bryophyta staff. So yeah, cool. I 
have no reason to do Riot Fight outside of bingo events as it is. So cool. I'm I'm for it. Uh, yeah, I got no problem with that. There's actually one question below this that I haven't read and I literally just read. It says, question 13, should we add a combat ring with safe death and a party room chest with a lever to the clan hall? To the clan hall. Yeah, shouldn't be pulled. Yeah, I mean, no, just it improve shouldn't it. be pulled. But just improve it, but yeah. It's, that's exciting, though. I forgot about that one. I forgot that they were even talking about that. In the beginning, clan of like, hall, like, like hey, this clan is hall awesome. improvements. <laughs> clan hall improvements. This is awesome, right? Again, eh? Why is it being pulled? Speaking of beating a dead horse, um, I like this one. I kind of like the one below it too, which does have a significant game change, right? Um, should we increase the visibility in the fight caves? Oh, uh, basically, I'm imagining that we can see the entire fight cave arena mm -hmm. just like you can in the inferno because the inferno i think they list in here they pretty much say that like the inferno has a bigger range of visibility than any other piece of content in the vanilla game without using a gpu plugin pretty much like you have much bigger visibility on vanilla and they kind of want to do that for the fight caves that would be delightful for speed running that could be what shaves off my time for the sub 30 Mm -hmm. I know I could look up rotations. I just haven't, right? So I think that could help a lot as well. I think that's really cool. Yeah, so a lot of the, the, the questions after these are what we talked about in the beginning where it's like All the fishing net spawn. All Toggleable, blah, 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 blah. So briefly, how do you feel about the 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 expl poison dynamite? For oh. Pure? I, I don't give a shit. Oh, is the, I Please tell me this is being on. Thank God it's being on pulled because... I don't care. It's speaking oh, they took of, it out. No, it's being unpulled. So it's just being if they're just adding it in. Oh, okay. Which thank God because <laughs> do you want to talk about it? An update? I do not give a shit about. Oh, Oxy. We have not talked about the fact that they were going to pull a visual change to Torva, not even a stat change, just a visual change to yeah. Torva armor, and they retracted that question already. This poll blog came out on February 10th. Four days later, they're like, okay, so we've gotten feedback. People don't want Torva to change. Ugh. Why? <laughs> Why? Why? I liked it. It looked fine. I think that the original design of Torva is a little too much for old school RuneScape. The art style has, has tried to, to remain consistent. And I don't think that the originally designed, like the released version of Torva fits the old school style. So then they, they, they offered this change and mm -hmm. it looked fine to me. It didn't look game changing. It didn't look that drastically different, but people said, man, no. So then they're just not pulling it anymore. That's frustrating. I think out of all of these, it's things like that, that just... You were going to put it in a poll. What's the point in a poll if you take the question away? Did you think it was going to pass? And if you thought it was just going to pass, then just put it in the game. But they took it out of the poll when they could have just left it. And the people who didn't want it could have just voted no and done their civic duty of RuneScape of Gilinar. And all the people who wanted it, who aren't complaining on Twitter and Reddit, could have just voted yes to the to the majority of the people, the silent majority. If you're going to have something in a poll, do not take it out of the poll because of feedback. Let the poll give you, let the poll results be the feedback. Like my, my only the results. My only critique to that is let the poll results speak for themselves. Yes. That's why we still don't have a new skill. That's why we still don't have a lot of things in the game because once something gets shot down, they're just never going to look at it again. I think in that sense, Jagex has wised up a little bit and been like, all right, if they don't like it in this early stage, we're just going to take it out and do a different poll with it. Yeah. So then maybe okay. we can put the change that we want into the game. Well, because... then here's what they should have done. Here's what they should have done. They should have said, should we change... They should have pulled the, the question, should we change the look of Torva? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? 
and then and then later came back with these the implementation of okay this is what we've come up with the change maybe that's what it was but again let the poll results speak for themselves they had the wherewithal to to release this blog with that question in there do they just not <laughs> i don't know that's my soapbox <laughs> A lot of the polling system nowadays, the modern polling system, is 90% stupid shit and 10% things that could be extremely detrimental to old school RuneScape. And I don't mean detrimental as in a new edition. I mean, again, what if they voted no for group Iron Man? Yeah, spike right? votes. Like, again, spite votes are not going to overwhelm the majority of players. But still, why bother even risking it? I really like the beta worlds as they are. I think the beta worlds are a great uh, kind of like pseudo replacement for polls, right? If TOA is going to come out in July, release the beta world with all this stuff in January or December. And let's play around with it. Let's mm -hmm. take it to all the different bosses. Let's take it to PvP encounters. Let's see how it's going to work, right? Let's open the beta worlds for two weeks, and let's get a decent amount of feedback. They do that with the items, and it works great, right? But let's replace the polling system with that for large-scale updates that offer new items, because let's be honest... Mod Ed said the other day on stream, quests pass with like a 95% approval rating. Right. Like, keep pulling quests, it's fine. But the rewards are what people care about because everyone's so afraid of a repeat EOC. We're not getting a repeat EOC. We're going to be okay, right? But to avoid something like the Staff of Armadil from RS3 or was a Storm of Armadil? I don't know, whatever it was, the big destructive peaking thing or the vls that can one bang people main game just because the vls's spec is disgusting right mm -hmm. like let's test these things out let's get significant player feedback let's make specific player focus groups with these new items right let's find the people who have 200 mil and some skills and let's have them use it for skilling. Let's get the big name PKers to go out and PK each other, get into fights and kill people, kill each other with these items and see how it works, right? Mm -hmm. Get Oblivion or Vertigo or something like that to go out with these new items and test them at every single boss in the game to see how it changes the meta, right? don't run any numbers or anything crazy like that you're not going to possibly have the time how does it feel how does it react is there anything that we missed right are there any bosses that we might need to look at right when the twisted bow came out they had to nerf general gardor's magic level mm -hmm. because general gardor had a very high mage defense and the tebow could hit like 90s or some uh, that's an over exaggeration, but still, right? It was high. It was like eighties or nineties. Yeah, it was. It was probably like high eighties. It was high when it first came out, so they had to adjust it, right? This should be the replacement for polling. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not saying full blown play test. We have beta worlds, right? We have ways to give the players a say, because the problem right now is that I don't know what any of this stuff looks like. So to vote no because I don't like the idea you i'm not a game dev like what do i know about how to run anything yeah the polling system is so severely flawed in the way it runs right now if you can't tell it makes me kind of upset um i couldn't tell it all <laughs> exactly um, here's a question for you though with all of these polls that we voted on can i add game developer to my resume <laughs> <laughs> honestly you probably should at this point <laughs> A game. I'm a video game consultant. Video that's game what consultant. I'm gonna, that's what I'm going <laughs> to put myself as. I'm a video game consultant for basically having decided the fate of, uh, of OSRS. <laughs> J mods, please. You're professionals. You know what you're doing. We trust you to do the right thing. You're not going to fuck it up like EOC. Players, they're not going to fuck it up like EOC. Down with the polling system. 
<laughs> mostly, mostly down with the polling system. Right. There are things. Just don't spite vote. If you're out there and you're like, ooh, I can't wait to vote no to these because other people will enjoy it, please don't. Please don't yeah. do that. Uh, the JMA, Jagex does not need to be punished for these dumbass poll questions. Right. They don't need to be discouraged from adding more dumbass poll questions. They need to be encouraged that they know how to make a game well. And a majority of them play OSRS as it is. Mm -hmm. So they know what they want to see in the game. Encourage your JMods to continue to make productive changes and move towards progress in OSRS. There will never be another EOC. We're safe from that. Yep. Good God, I hate the polling system sometimes. <laughs> I feel like that's a great <laughs> note to send us to break so we can uh, eat some pizza. And, Perfect. Um, <laughs> and uh, well, guys, we will see you after this uh, short little commercial break. Toodles. is always full of pipers ever since he rolled it. Oh, didn't see you there. Good day to you, mate. My name's Herman Karanos, founder and director of this here Piscatoris fishing colony. We don't get too many visitors way up here, but I'm glad you stopped in. Stick around for a bit, I'll be more than happy to give you a tour. tour, 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 tour. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you an important safety announcement. Attention. This is a message from the Gilinor Protection Agency. We have received unconfirmed reports of a dangerous anomaly located off the southwestern coast of continental Gilinor. Preliminary data suggests a large, winged, serpentine-like creature, although exact descriptions of its coloration and pattern have been inconsistent. The creature has been sighted in bodies of water that have historically been classed as toxic to most forms of life. It is unknown whether the creature can live out of water at this time. No data from the fossil record matches these early reports, and therefore the Gilinor Protection Agency has classed this creature as a biosynthetic anomaly, rating hyperlethal. All cognitively sentient races within the immediate vicinity of the reported anomaly are advised to evacuate the area and remain inland until the Gilinor Protection Agency can identify, confirm, contain, or destroy the anomaly. If you come into contact, do not engage with the anomaly. Close your eyes and keep still. The creature may leave you alone. Please await further instructions. The Gilinor Protection Agency thanks you for your cooperation. You will now be returned to your regularly scheduled broadcast. After all that, you still want to stick around? Well, glad to have you on board then, mate. We'll get you started here shortly, and you'll be a fisherman in no time. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that commercial break, because I know that I sure did. And I speak for Oxy when I can say that he sure did, too. Because <laughs> I know that you did, so. <laughs> I loved it. It was the best. It's probably recycled, but who 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 pays attention to that? It's anyway, recycled. <laughs> is the part of the episode or the show where we want to thank our lovely patrons. Starting with the wise old man tier, thank you so much to Scape Caution, Ilagio, Bolimer, Basket, Benjamin R, Captain Clunk, Morty, Drum TXT. King Flip, Fortimus, Harley Dad, Ice, Hualo, MB, Jombis. I think I said that right. I am not entirely sure. Jake W, aka Mole Man, Jonah Zoon, Jordy, Macratinka Jones, Monkey Waffle, Mr. Darkside 76, 999, 999. Pooper Cheeks. Russ of Fury. Salted Snake. Shadow Blade. Troll. And last but not least, T Pace. Thank you so much for subscribing to the Wise Old Man tier on our Patreon. And moving on to our esteemed KBD King Black Dragon tier of folks. Huge thank you to Oxy's Dad, 
if you are listening, thank you, Oxy's dad. Probably not, but it, yeah, just gotta say that. Cookies in MILF, Evan B, Kroll, the Lord Jake himself, P Joint, our third favorite Patreon supporter, <laughs> Ralph. <laughs> thank you, Ralph. Uh, I never know what to call you, but Ryan, aka Akuna, aka the Slayer of Necks. Or, or Oxy's left nut. <laughs> ah, I was going to say, Oxy's left nut. nut. <laughs> and last but not least on this tier, Spartan Fire. Thank you so much, everybody who supports us on Patreon. Whether or not you get a shout out or not, thank you so much. We have a lot of tiers available on our Patreon, ranging from $1 all the way up to $25. So whatever your budget looks like, if you would like to support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash xpwaste. We have many, many, many benefits linked to discord so when you join if you join make sure to please uh connect your discord account to your patreon account i have a little bit of a confession if you were somebody who has joined patreon in the last i actually don't know how long this is going on but i did check our patreon uh i checked our patreon settings and it actually wasn't automatically assigning roles i apologize because that was an oversight that I should have been more uh, up on. So if you've joined the, the Patreon and you've also joined the Discord and you don't have your associated role, please message me and I will fix that manually. So before you go any further with that, Michael, um, it was a mistake on our part. So we're going to poll it for the XP Waste community to see if we should fix it. <laughs> we're going to put it to a poll. And if we don't get 75% of the Discord to vote yes... You guys can SMD. Some people just got used to having to link their own Patreon. Some people just got used to it because it's a mistake that we made. So <laughs> look for a poll today in Discord. Oxy's not salty at all, uh, as you can tell. But no, if you uh, if you're if you're not seeing those those roles added to your name in our Discord channel and you know you pay for it, please let one of us know and we'll get it added. Thanks, you racers. It is time for. The community question. I believe we can we can either start in the YouTube or the Anchor. It's up to you, Oxy. Uh, we'll start with Anchor because there are significantly less responses on Anchor. <laughs> so we're going to do that. So just going off what we have here, Matt says, 99 prayer was obscenely expensive, but I have never once regretted a single piece of GP spent on it. Absolutely here for it. Jonathan says, so I would say the Slayer Helm, Guffins, Barrow's Gloves, Blowpipe, Fury, Trident, and the Whip, along with the decks, can carry anyone 110 plus combat through all PVM content. Hard agree. Agree. Hard agree. Jake says, I got the Raids Prayer Scrolls super early. 50 mil for a Dex and 7 mil for an Arcane. What? You must have gotten that. You must have oh. gotten that way back in the day, back when they like just oh, no. came out. There was some expensive booty back in the day. Holy smokes, that's a lot of money. Vincente says, "I bought the necklace of anguish for my main because I'm working towards 99 range as my first max combat stat." We love a good Zenite. Frito Lay 17, a rune battle axe. But he's talking way back in the day, like okay. 2001, 2002. <laughs> okay. Like, that I was... can't imagine what a rune battle axe must have gone for. That threw in me classic. off. Classic. <laughs> like, that must have been gross. So expensive. Seymour says, my first big account upgrade was my Amulet of Blood Fury. I bought it for Sins of the Father, which, oh my god, that's a lifesaver during that quest. Mm -hmm. And now I can't train Slayer without it. Yes. Good. I'm Great in update. the same boat, but with Theater of Blood. Refuse to not take my Blood Fury to TOB. Because <laughs> we stand in efficiency. Sparkles says steel armor and a mithril scimitar because I just started and I'm free to play at the moment. Actually, not bad upgrades. So to dip into nostalgia a little bit here, I have no nostalgia left playing this game, except for sometimes in small little salt size pieces, right? Mm -hmm. A few of those places are the armor <clears throat> shops, right? Because as a kid, the armor shops were so cool because, like, I couldn't afford any of the armor. This is how poor I was, right? I couldn't afford any of the armor in the shops to buy anything. So I always just have to look and be like, man, I wish someday I could afford adamant. 
like I just had to go to the Varrock um, sword store to mm-hmm. buy like a bronze dagger for a clue step. And I haven't been to that shop in forever. I'm like, man, I used to love it in here. Like, this is so cool. So being like a new free to play player and like achieving something like that. Are they permanent upgrades? No, you'll grow out of them. But that's always a big accomplishment because money in free to play sucks. So yeah. Good. on That you. might actually carry you a long time. Yeah. Given how it is incredibly hard to, to like either get the money for things or mm-hmm. find that stuff. Cause like, what, what do you kill to get a rune scimitar in free to play? Not many things. Uh, nothing. Make yeah, it. So, <laughs> sorry. I, I genuinely, unless you're Grand Exchange, it, it. I don't. If you're an Iron yeah. Man, yeah. But like, if you're, if you're not an Iron Man, you can just buy it. But, yeah. Anyway, moving on. Mac says, I got construction to 84. It's very all right. Haven't gotten my Nexus full of tellies since I'm, guessing I'm chipping away at the Zenites. I have one of the four of the Tormented. You might swap to the ring. Good. Mm. No one can ever take 84 construction away from you. Take your time. That's beautiful. <laughs> and finally, I'm saying it last because they started it with trigger warning because they knew oh. it was going to upset me. Trigger warning from Low Bottomizer. Oh, Low Bottomizer. Yeah. It took me a second to read that one out there. Trigger warning BCP and Tassies. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I will never sell them. They're my first huge major upgrade and they make me look incredible. It's better to look good than to be good. Now that I will stand by. <laughs> Stand by till the end. Look, look good, good feel good, good, play good. Let's go. Um, so it's That's actually amazing. funny. My BCP was given to me. It wasn't given to me. I won it in a forfeit that Scape had to do during his 24-hour stream. Mm-hmm. He lost the money-making challenge. And when he lost, he had to do a forfeit. And the forfeit was, I believe he had 28 items of varying value in his inventory and he hid mm-hmm. his inventory. And he said, I was like the only one in his chat at the time. He said, Oxy, pick a number and you can have whatever item corresponds to that slot. So I chose 17. Cause like Oxy M 17. I'm like, I'll go with 17. Mm-hmm. So Scape sitting there, are you fucking kidding me? And it was the most expensive item. It was the BCP, the single most expensive item in the whole list, yeah. right? And I was like, are you sure I'm supposed to take this from you? Because like I had known Scape for like maybe I had known him for a couple of months, but mm-hmm. I hadn't really had a long term conversation with him ever and i was popping into the first stream i've seen of him and i just took like 25 mil like that so i was like are you sure i should be taking this from you but he's like no it's a forfeit go ahead take it i genuinely don't think i have ever sold that bcp i've sold everything else besides my like bcp and my blowpipe Mm -hmm. anything that's been given to me as a gift i keep and i'm thinking years down the line when i do a max rebuild or i do a tebow rebuild or something like that i'm not gonna sell the bcp i'm gonna give it away to somebody oh yeah like i have to like pass it on as an heirloom now like this singular (laughs) bcp must stay with me you must never sell this bcp so i get that i understand where the attachment can come from for certain items do i advise it as your first big upgrade no do i understand why you'll never sell it yes i do that's all we've got for anchor okay we have a ton of comments on youtube so since we're kind of running out of time not really like there's no time limit for this but there's 33 comments on youtube and uh, we can get we'll get to the comments um, but i did just want to plug our giveaway Mm -hmm. now seems like the perfect time and segue into that as far as each week in february We'll be doing a giveaway centered around our YouTube channel. Um, So to enter for this week's giveaway, all you have to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're already subscribed, that's great. Drop a like on the video. If you're not, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and leave a comment. That will enter you into this week's giveaway for two old school RuneScape bonds. The winner of last week, we don't actually know because we're recording this on Monday. It will be released 
a day later than we normally do. So on Thursday, you're hearing this on Thursday, we're going to do the drawing for this week's winner, the day of release, and then post it on our social media. So you'll know if you won by checking our Instagram, our Twitter, and you can check the description of this video. I think that's how we're going to do it. Yeah. So there's three ways to find out Instagram, Twitter, and the description of this video. So if your name's in there, we've probably already gotten in contact with you, to be honest. Um, so yeah. Oh, and Discord. Thank you, Elagio. In the recording booth chat, he just said, and Discord. Yes. Also check Discord. It'll be in the XU Waste chat somewhere. Hopefully you have to jump to scroll that long. But um, yeah, if you've won, congratulations. You're still eligible to enter in this in, in each week. So we haven't like said, if you win, you're not eligible to win again. Like anybody can do it. So like I said, if you're already, if you're already subscribed, just drop a like and a comment. All that being said, we have 33 comments on our YouTube. Some of these are geared towards the actual giveaway. Some of them are just uh, talking about the community question. I'm not going to read all of them, but one that really stuck out to me just right off the bat was simply, thank you for making me train construction. So I'm assuming, <laughs> I'm assuming they heard last week's episode and they said, yeah, 84 construction is probably a good upgrade. So <laughs> son of a, I, I love that. Nah. <laughs> son of a bitch. Like I spent my money on this. Okay. Fine. Yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, Johnny Castaway says, so glad I bought my decks before the GE tax saved millions of GP just from the time the tax came out. It has gone up. So that is the very truth. Um, I mean, it's not a troll drop anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're around 20 mil. So if you're in a duo or a trio, that's still pretty good money. Uh, but it's a good drop. Uh, let's see. Some people actually commented on Anchor and YouTube. So that's kind of cool. Vicente, thank you for commenting on both. Mm -hmm. Ilagio says, my first unlock was the imbued Slayer Helm for that fatty damage boost alongside a maxed house mainly for the rejuvenation pool and fairy ring that I use in tandem with the quest cape and Lumbridge elite diary. Very nice. I like those upgrades. Now we didn't really mention the Slayer Helm. I don't think we mentioned the black mask, but like the Slayer Helm is, is a great upgrade. If you combine it into all of the components and you imbue it, mm -hmm. I can't really remember if we talked about that, but a lot of you seem to mention that in these comments. There's yeah. more than one comment talking about the Slayer Helm imbued. So if you haven't done I that, I certainly think we we covered it with um we covered it with the black mask, but yeah, it's it's in the same in the same boat. So Slayer Helm it's also a huge upgrade. Yeah, huge. Uh Jordy <laughs> enjoyed the episode, slowly catching up, blah blah blah. But they did say their best Bible upgrade in RuneScape would be a girlfriend. Same, same, Jordy. Same. Are they still going for 10k, or is the market on girlfriends gone up? I don't know. I mean, the tax of the GE really messed that up. So honestly, at this point, I don't even know. But we'll have to find out. The Let's GE see. tax ruined my girlfriend oh. buying. <laughs> Damn it, Jack X. <laughs> Bexel, I said, as I'm starting to enter PVM with low level bosses and dummy bosses, trying to figure out what the next steps in my account are. Definitely going to prioritize the POH. Yes. Good Great show. for low-level bossing. Even if you're in the mid-game, late mid-game, getting you don't have to go all the way to 84 just to have the benefits of the things we talk about in the POH. If you can mm -hmm. get as high as you can get, there's almost like there's benefits at almost any level in construction. Mm -hmm. After level 50, just stop where, where you feel comfortable. 50 is probably what I would start saying is where real real upgrades start because then you can start getting teleports in your house. So if you're, if you're looking for a level to start with, maybe go to 50. It's not that expensive. Mm -hmm. Like I said, there's a ton of YouTube comments. Can't get to all of them, but we definitely appreciate you guys answering those. If you want to enter this week's giveaway for two old school RuneScape bonds, make sure you leave a comment. It can answer the question or it can literally just be whatever you want to say. I think uh, Bucket, Bucket God, a, a prominent member of our Discord, he said, Bucket God, slash, comment anything. Because we said, hey, comment anything. And he comment literally did. Comment anything, baby. Love it. Comment anything. <laughs> All right, Oxy, I think you have a couple achievements, and then we'll get into a fun question. I do. I do. It is time for the, 
the esteemed achievement of the week. So as always, we have a couple of different categories that we're going with here. Popping over to the Levels and Achievements tab. First on the list, with the Skilling Achievement of the Week, we have Fortimus, who hit 2K total. Woo! That's access to a bunch of new worlds. And They're great worlds, by the way. I, yeah, 2K total speaks for itself. Um, for PVM, we have the Tuzkal himself of TNL. Our boy Too Fast Kills has completed an Inferno. In less than 70 minutes, 67 minutes and 52 seconds to be exact. On a pure account, a Zerker account, with 45 defense, 48 prayer, he had two and a half brews and three whole restores left in his inventory. Damn. That's just flexing on him at that point. <laughs> Huge I, shout out to Jesse. Come on. I, I don't know. I can't even fathom doing the Inferno that quickly. Like we said, sometimes the late game PVM achievements are few and far between, but when they happen, holy shit, they are impressive. Yeah, that's really good. That's awesome. And finally, this one is nice because it has a little bit of a special double shout out. Our good friend and fellow mod in TNL, Damien, DFX, DFX, KT, I think it's DFX is how you say his in-game name. Mm -hmm. I've called him Damien for like two years. Or I, Demo. Yeah. I think Demo. he goes by yeah. Demo mostly, yeah. Yeah, he completed Song of the Elves. Cannot wait to see Damo get into the gauntlet. More importantly, though, I'm pretty certain, hopefully by the time this episode's come out, Damien's had a kid. Yeah. Damien had, I th think this is this will be his third child yep. coming this week. So yeah. whether whether the child is here yet, we are not sure. Um, but, Damien, congratulations to you, Father Round 3. Yes. Huge GZ. Yeah, I, I've he's been putting off that light puzzle for so long with when good he, reason. Yes. Holy shit. Not no shame on that. Like <laughs> if you're not into it, you're not into it. But that light puzzle sucks. Him doing that was such is such a relief on us because we're like, dude, now there's so much content that this game just like you unlock just a whole new level of things. Mm -hmm. It's volcano getting into the gauntlet. It's just like come they just like Prift is so good. There's an agility course there. So if you hate training agility, I will say go there. Like having done leagues and having access to get to Prith and needing to buy things, there's a lot of shit in Prith that I didn't know was in Prith before this league. Oh. Right? You can repair armor in Prith. There's an herb lore shop. There's a magic shop. There's weapon shops, armor shops. I think Prif literally has everything in it. It's a huge unlock. But as main accounts, we're like Agility Course, Zalcano, Slayer Dungeon, <laughs> Gauntlet, good enough. There's yeah. like there's shark spots, there's lobster spots. I'm pretty certain there's oh, Yeah. I didn't even mention the teak trees. It's like the best place to cut teak trees. Literally, there's teaks, there's red mahogany, there's an altar randomly somewhere out in the middle of nowhere. There's a spinning wheel, there's death's office, there's a place to do a loom as well as a spinning wheel. There's there's so much stuff. There's a, a house mining portal. store. Yeah. Prith is some of the greatest like content dumps in this entire game. There's a dairy churn, just in case you make your own butter. I don't know. You could have a Priftinus locked account that like once you get to Prif, you just stay there. I know yeah. there's a guy out there, Taranwin only, and his end goal was to get to Prif. And it's, I kid you not, thousands of hours of content to just get to Prif if you only stay in Taranwin. So eventually he'll be there. But if you just like get your account to the point where you're in Priftinus and then you just never leave, I think that would be kind of fun restrictions wise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Could be fun, for sure. But congratulations to the three of you on your massive milestone achievements this week. So this week, check out the community section on Spotify and the pinned comment on YouTube for the community question, which is... Give us your honest opinions on the polling system. Hey, whether yeah. you like it, whether you don't like it. Is there any question that you really liked? Is there any question that you thought, why is this in the polling system? Is there anything that's passed that you've thought to yourself, that's stupid, and that shouldn't have passed. Let us know. I'm, I'm interested now. Yeah. If you had some uh, spicy takes like we did, 
put them in the community section. We just want to know. Why is this spicy? <laughs> and it's in if we get the type of response we got like on our YouTube uh, in this next like for this video, just know we may not get to actually read them all like we have in the past. So mm -hmm. um, we do apologize. It we knew it would get to this point. Like if if a hundred people respond, we can maybe read five or ten because um, we could have an entire podcast of just reading those questions. So uh, we do appreciate you guys answering. And I don't want to. I don't want us not reading it to discourage you from doing that because we actually read them. We read every single one. We just may not read them live on the show. So, but Michael, check it out. We do a posty Pete style mm -hmm. episode or a posty Pete style extra episode for Patreon, where we just read and respond to comments, questions, emails, whatever from our various videos, mm -hmm. right? We do the Posty Pete special, and we kind of just dedicate the whole episode to community engagement. Very that cool. could be fun. That yeah. could be a good time. So yeah. maybe there will be an episode where we literally read every single YouTube comment. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see. That'd be fun. All right. It is time now for the fun question. I think Oxy had picked this one out from Discord, right? It was on the fun questions yes. portion of Discord? Yes. This was on the fun question portion of discord this one's gonna be off the chain so our boy akuna matata ryan oxy's left nut the angel of death he asked if you could devote as much time as you do to old school runescape to anything else what would it be dang five and a half thousand hours put into something else I honestly would say I would, okay, it has been on my dreams list to learn how to do blacksmithing and like carpentry and just making and things and working with my hands. So if I could spend 5,000 hours mastering that craft, I think it would mm -hmm. be hella fun. I know that's a short answer for something that we could probably dive into, but it, it kind of goes like it speaks for itself. I really enjoy making things. And that's why I have this little 3d printer robot here. Mm -hmm. I it's, it's like the, the digital version for me, like creating something out of, out of something else or creating something out of nothing. And, and just mm -hmm. having a 3d modeling software where I can, I can make things and, and, and print them out and have them be useful in my everyday life. Or they just sit on my desk. Like some of these things are that to me is amazing. And so that's kind of like the introduction to what I would ultimately want, like to get into in my life, like the post-retirement kind of uh, mm -hmm. hobby, blacksmithing, woodworking, leather work, just that kind of stuff. Um, I think 5,000 hours of learning how to, not necessarily 5,000 hours, but like if I just didn't play RuneScape throughout the week and I dedicated that time to learning a coding language... I think that would also oh, yeah, be, that would be like real super good. beneficial. Not only like, just because the jobs are very good, but I think that's the future of technology is like learning how to do all these things within computers. Mm -hmm. So, um, Lord knows I cannot code for shit. <laughs> That'd be a, that would actually be a really good one to learn how to do. Yeah. For me, I think because I have what, like 37, 3,800 hours on the main, probably a little bit more if you combine the groupie and the peer and the leagues accounts and all this other mm -hmm. stuff. Um, I, I think it would be so like I said earlier, I fence, right? I think it would be really cool to learn how to do like really advanced fighting stuff. Mm hmm. I'm super pacifistic and I don't actually like hurting people. That's why I'm a therapist. But like, you know, there's lots of reasons why I'm a therapist in any case. I really like the idea of being like master swordsman, black belt, you know, in different fighting styles. Yeah. Um, I did shooting in college for a while, which was also a surprise to a lot of people given like political stances and things. But I did do shooting. Um, and that was so fun. Mm -hmm. I was like distinguished expert rank with the civilian shooting. Like I had, I was a crack shot with the rifle. Yeah. And 
I would kind of like to see how much further that can go. I would have liked to get into maybe like, you know, the long range iron sights, like 500 yards shooting, um, like putting time into that, putting time into like physical things that I'm passionate about or think would be super cool on the flip side to that. I would love to learn how to draw and animate and things like that. I feel like I have such a, this is going to sound a little ego y. <laughs> I feel like I have such a creative mind to do things. But holy shit, am I bad at art? <laughs> <laughs> like, I can write very well, but I can't put what I'm imagining on paper. I can't, the things I imagine, I can't, you know. I can't go into Blender and animate that kind of stuff. You know how dope our bingo trailers would be if I had put 5,000 hours into animating instead of RuneScape, <laughs> right? And I don't want to say this as like, I wish I would have done this instead of RuneScape. This yeah. game is effectively my livelihood at this point. So like, you know, I have literally no regrets relating to this game. Yeah. But like anything else oh man there's so many like it, yeah it, it's it'd be so ridiculously fun you know i'd also like to learn how to play an instrument i can't read music um a piano would be one of the first things i want to learn how to play mm -hmm. i can play the drums because that's pretty easy you know it's got that rhythm mm -hmm. you know although 100 beats per minute is apparently really hard to keep on track with if you've ever done the inferno you understand <laughs> um, I don't know how to read music in high school I self-taught myself how to play piano really? uh, I right I would go into YouTube and you can watch like Synthasia videos where the piano keys are like transcribed onto a video with a bunch of different keys mm -hmm. and I would draw a set of piano keys I would draw like a C through C yeah, or like double that. And then I would put numbers on the keys, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, up to like 50. Yeah. And I would just put the thing in front of me where you should put actual sheet music. <laughs> and I would follow the numbers on my little hand drawn thing at like 15 years old. And the thing I was learning how to play was called river flows in you. It was a song they were originally going to use for Twilight, but I don't think Robert Pattinson could play it, so they had to replace it with something else. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll never believe why I tried to learn how to play piano. To impress a girl. It impressed literally everyone I showed. Ironically, except for her. <laughs> she came from a very musical family, so... When I was like tapping, I got it to sound like really smooth and really fluid. But the fact that I couldn't play chords or like use the foot pedal or anything like that, her family has been so musical for their entire lives. Oh, I'm no. like, look at what I could do. It was effectively someone being like, like for what we do right now, being like, oh my God, look at me. I just finished Monkey Madness. Like, isn't that so cool? Like, I'm, I was such a good RuneScape player. I finished Monkey Madness. And you're like, yeah yeah um <laughs> so it like it just like didn't land oh, no. the way i wanted it to with the person i wanted it to everybody else was like holy shit you're like fucking mozart dude that's awesome <laughs> um so i'd like to learn how to like play an instrument for not the same impressing the females reasons i think yeah. it would be cool to know but like you know it can be relaxing it can be uh you know it can be something that's very fulfilling mm -hmm. i i'm somewhat musically inclined i can mm -hmm. pick up an instrument like i have a guitar in my background um you can't see it actually okay no you can't anyway uh <laughs> i can pick up an instrument without much like pre-knowledge and and do something with it like i can play chords i know the notes but i have no technical knowledge of of piano mm -hmm. and that's been something in my mind where i'm like why don't i just go to the school of youtube and and watch a video you know it's like it's, yeah it's easy to do mm -hmm. but i just haven't done it and uh that goes for a lot of things did you know oxy that you can do like piano classes over zoom 
Like really? You don't even need to be in person. They have people that will teach you piano via a Zoom call. You just have to have a piano and a, and a webcam, which you probably have that. So I have a webcam, but not a piano. Oh, dang it. Well, I live in an apartment. I mean, not I a piano, but like a for keyboard. A like a, just also electric. Don't... They're, you can get like, they're like that big. We, we just got done talking about how I only learned how to play piano to impress the ladies and it didn't work what makes so you, you think discouraged? i would own a keyboard i didn't get discouraged i just like fell off because like i didn't play piano <laughs> you true. Know? like i'm not i wasn't like oh god what will happen she didn't like my piano skills nope i just put my time into something else and i'm okay with that That's right good. it could have been but your villain origin story but you chose the of path. all things to be my villain origin story the fact that i was unable to impress a girl at 15 years old is not gonna be that's like incel behavior like i'm <laughs> we're okay I promise you, we're okay. I'm not I'm not sticking with that. I would genuinely like to learn how to play an instrument for reasons that don't involve impressing a different sex or sure. the same sex in any case. <laughs> yeah, so what I'm taking away from this fun question is that we should probably spend less time on RuneScape and more times on the th- more time on the things we're ambitious about. Or not all right slow down there <laughs> that's why i added the caveat the caveat <laughs> or not <laughs> because you could answer that question is that if you want to devote as much time as you do um to orss to anything else what would it be and my answer could be osrs so you could just like devote yeah. time that you would be devo- i don't know you could say you want to play runescape or you want to play another game yeah just answer the question however you like it's really good perspective as to like what could you do other than runescape that is fun yes not that you want to do a lot other than play runescape because we all love this game to death but like you know i don't know i don't know i don't know there's things to think about (laughs) i don't i don't play a lot of runescape these days anyway not as much as i used to Mm -hmm. like pre-baby i was probably two or three hours a day like consistently now i'm Mm -hmm. like two or three hours a week yeah, maybe damn. yeah it's not great not great for my gains but i love having a family so it's a good trade-off in some instances because there will be weeks that i play a lot and there's weeks that i don't there's days i play some and there's mm-hmm. done days i don't log in at all exactly I, yeah i haven't logged in at all today like i usually am logged in while i'm recording but i'm so brain dead from just being tired that i'm like yeah, the fact that it's 12.35 uh, right now on the East Coast and the fact that I'm still conscious is baffling to me. Yes. I think that's a great segue into thank you guys so much for listening to this podcast. I was going to say, please be a segue into we'll see you next week. <laughs> yep. Holy shit. This recording track <laughs> is two hours and 40 minutes long. That is not how long this episode's going to be. No. Editing, Michael, hear me. That is not how long this episode is going to be. But like, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, guys. Going at it for a while. If you've made it this far into the episode, thank you so much for listening. Things to remember. Number one, it's okay to XP waste. It's the whole mantra of the show. If you don't want to play RuneScape, don't play RuneScape. I think some people needed to hear that today. So, if you made it this far and you heard that, that's for you. Check us out on our social media. Links will be in the description. We have a Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. You can follow our personal stuff. Like We have our links down there somewhere. Um, And don't forget to enter the giveaway. Anything else you want to plug, Oxy? Um, Our Discord's pretty cool. Don't forget about our YouTube getaway. Getaway? Giveaway. That's pretty cool. Polling system... (laughs) I'm voting blanket yes. I'm not going to tell you guys how to vote because that's shitty. But, like, I don't see a reason why any of these things shouldn't make it into the game. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of reasons why 30 of the 35 questions or whatever it is shouldn't be pulled. But I don't see why they shouldn't make it into the game. So, vote as you will with your hearts for what you think should be in Old School RuneScape. Here's a fun one for people who are still here because we've already we've obviously said goodbye and we're still talking. Check the bottom of the description 
for our P.O. Box address. If you want to send us anything, it's there. I'm There's not going to mention it to anywhere. That. There's limits to that. Obviously. Hold the phone. The box is Hold like this phone. big. So like, don't be a dick. You know what to do. We are we are getting a bag of dicks in the mail. We're not. 100%. We're getting a bag of Nobody dicks Nobody but the degenerates who we've already talked about and told them not to do it are going to do that. So <laughs> if you want to send us something fun, it's going to come to Texas. So if it's for Oxy specifically, I'll, I'll have to figure that out. But um, mm-hmm. our P.O. box will be in the description. So if you made it that far, that's for you. Guys, thank you so much for listening. We love you. Thank you for so much for your support. And we will see you next week on maybe Thursday. Maybe probably when, Thursday. Probably Thursday. Probably For the Thursday. time being. So, yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.